The third topic of this section deals with arc length. So at this point, we've talked about tangent lines, areas under the curve. Now we want to do arc length. And it's actually pretty straightforward. It's just a formula you need to follow to be able to find the arc length. All right, so we already know that how to find the length of a curve, length L of a curve C, given of the form um, Y is a function of X, A, or excuse me, X is bounded between A and B. So if F prime is continuous, then this, this arc length formula that I have here, this the length is the integral from A to B, the square root one plus dy dx squared, and then on the outside, um, root dx. Right, this is something you should have learned right from uh, Calc 1. So now what we're going to do a little, a little different is that this curve C, right, that we want to find the length of here, or the arc length of it along, um, is described by parametric equations. So again, x is a function of t and y is also a function of t, right? And so this here is, notice that our t, a and b here, our t is going to go from alpha to beta, right? Formula is pretty straightforward. Um, so this means that c is traversed once from left to right, that's important, left to right, as t increases from alpha to beta, right? And f of alpha is equal to a and f of b beta is equal to b. So that's how you um, can find your, your new bounds of integration to help you, all right? So putting formula one and formula two together, all right, and using the substitution rule, you have this, all right, your arc length L, all right, the integral from a to b, the square root of one plus dy dx squared dx. This is your original arc length, but now we're saying that uh, x and y are functions of t is equal to. Your bounds of integration might need to change depending on the problem. So it's the integral from alpha to beta, the square root of 1 plus dy dt over dx dt squared, and dx just gets replaced by dx dt dt. So on your own, I'm not going to waste time in these videos here, but you can clean up this entire mess here, right? So as long as dx dt is greater than zero here, right? The reason it has to be greater than zero is because what we want to do is we want to put it underneath the square root sign somehow. And obviously, you can't do that with a negative number. All right, we have this. Arc length is equal to the integral from alpha to beta, the square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So basically, it's, um, <laughs> I personally think it's a lot easier than this one here. All right, so just keep this formula handy. But uh, let me put it. More fully on the next slide for you. All right, so thus we have the following result, which is the same form as formula three. So this formula here is this formula right here. So if a curve C is described by the parametric equations, x is a function of t, y is also a function of t, t is evaluated from alpha to beta, the derivatives f prime and g prime are continuous on alpha to beta, and c is traversed exactly once. So remember that's important. So that avoids going around it twice, um, uh, a parametric curve, right? As t increases from alpha to beta, then the length of c is given. So length is the integral, alpha beta square root dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, right? and your variable of integration here is dt or t. All right, important. Notice that the integral gives twice the arc length of a circle. Right? Because as t increases from 0 to 2 pi, the point here, sine of 2t, cosine of 2t, traverses the circle twice. So remember that, so be careful. So in general, when finding the length of a curve from a parametric representation, we have to be careful to ensure that c is traversed only once as t increases from alpha to beta. All right, let's do one example real quick. So find the arc length, the, excuse me, yes, the length of one arch of the uh, cycloid here, x is equal to r times theta minus sine of theta, y is equal to r, 1 minus cosine of theta. So I'm going to go back in the slides, because I want to find this arc length here, this, this darker blue arc length here. We found the area underneath, but I just want to find this arc length. Let me get back here. All right, so here's how we're going to do it. From example three, we see that one arch is described by the, par the parameter interval zero is the lower bound of theta to two pi. So it wasn't that two pi r, it was just two pi. So that's going to be our bounds of integration, zero to two pi, right? And since here, now, in, 
in the previous definition, we had dt, but here the variable, the parametric variable is theta, so we'll just replace t with theta. So dx d theta, so if I take the derivative of this, I get r1 minus cosine of theta, dy d theta is r sine of theta up here. All right, because notice that um, r1, r is not the variable, r is just a constant, so that just goes away. All right, so plugging this into here to our equation. I have my bound of integration from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to have to replace dx d theta with this. I'm going to have to place dy d theta oops, sorry about that, with this. All right, so plugging it in, I get this. The integral from 0 to 2 pi, r squared, because remember I'm squaring it. 1 minus cosine theta squared plus r squared sine squared theta d theta. All right, what I'm doing in this next step here is I am uh, foiling this out. So that foils out as 1 minus 2 cosine theta plus um, cosine squared theta sine squared theta. So you can kind of see where this one is going here, the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, right? That's going to get you 2, right? So it's this here, 2, at this 1 plus 1 becomes 1, but I'm going to factor it out as 2. Then I'm going to have 2 cosine of theta here, so I'm just factoring out the 2. So this is what I've got here. This r squared, you take the square root of it, it just comes out as r. So I have r, the integral 0 to 2 pi, square root of 2 times 1 minus cosine theta d theta. All right, now here's where it gets tricky. All right, how do I evaluate this integral, right? Like I can't use substitute it, like, ah, I don't know. So what that generally means is when you have a trigonometric um, integral and you can't use substitute it. In Calc 2, you learned all these um, trigonometric substitutions. So the first thing you want to do um, is try to find some trig sub that, or trig rule that you can plug into this. And what it's going to be is you're going to undo the power rule. All right, so to evaluate the integral, we use the identity sine squared of x. It's 1 half 1 minus cosine 2x. All right, here this is the power reducing. So we're going to take something like this, all right, and put it back into sine squared. So theta is equal to 2x, right? So wherever you see a 2x, you're going to replace it with theta. So by extension, then theta divided by 2 is x. So which gives us 1 minus cosine of theta. I'm taking the 1 half and bringing it over as a 2. is 2 sine squared theta divided by 2. So what I can do, all right, now here, so since I've got to change, check my bounds of integration, since 0 is less than pi, which is 2 theta, but notice what I'm plugging in is theta over 2. So we have, if I'm going to divide everything by 2, 0 is less than theta over 2, less than pi. And so sine of theta over 2 is greater than 0, obviously. All right, so therefore, plugging this in, I get the square root. This is a, what I originally had under or next to the integral. is literally going to get replaced by this. I get the 4 because I'm replacing it with 2 sine squared, so it becomes 4 sine squared of theta. And you can see that you can just take the um, uh, square root of this. That's why I had to check if it was greater than 0 here. All right, so I get this. And since I know it's greater than 0, I can just write it as 2 sine of theta over 2. So this gets replaced in, if I go back here, this part right here, this crazy looking thing here, simply gets replaced by this. The 2 came out because I had the r there. So L is equal to 2r, the integral of 0 to 2 pi sine of theta over 2 d theta. You're going to evaluate this integral very easily as a new um, substitution. And you're going to get this. And then plugging in your bounds of integration, you're going to get this. And then that's very easily like 8r. So that's your arc length. Just follow the formula, do the algebra to clean up uh, what's underneath the square root sign. That's very important. And then when you're dealing with these trig ones, um, always look, if you get a trig integral that you can't do, always try looking first to see if you could do a trig substitution. All right, I'll finish up the next video with surface area.